Hi, everybody, and welcome to Nonprofit Spotlight. Uh, as you know, Nonprofit Spotlight is a production of the Volunteer Advisory Committee here at Community Television. And every edition, we highlight a, a nonprofit doing wonderful work uh, in, uh, in, in our community and uh, really state and nationwide. And we're so fortunate to have Jill Wilker, who's the co-founder of Playing at Learning. She's going to tell us all about that today. Jill, welcome. Thank you, Steve. I'm glad to be here and excited Great. to talk about our programs. Yeah, wonderful. I'm really anxious to learn about it myself. Tell us a little bit, uh, Jill, about your background and, and how you came to be involved with uh, Playing at Learning and this wonderful concept and approach. Yeah, so I'm an engineer, uh, huh? married, a, married an engineer, and uh, somewhere around middle school, we had our kids found out about this wonderful program. Um, by an organization on the East Coast called FIRST. Mm -hmm. And FIRST itself was founded by an inventor, uh, Dean Kamen. And most notably, Dean is known for uh, many inventions, including the Segway and lots of other stuff. But no kidding. he wow. also invented FIRST or created FIRST because he was frustrated that here, particularly in the US, um, our young people aspire to be uh, in Hollywood or sports, right? They want to go to the Super Bowl or the World Series, but they're not aspiring to be engineers, creators, makers, inventors. And so he was struggling to hire people. And so he invented first to basically celebrate and recognize that math, science, engineering is actually fun, exciting, and um, amazing ways to make a difference in the world. Well, that's terrific. And I, I'm fascinated by uh, just the whole idea of STEM programs. You know, we have science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And as we were talking about uh, before the show began, actually, it's wonderful that the that, that kids, you know, can be these mathletes, kind of be celebrities within, you know, this wonderful learning process. So tell us more about uh, playing at learning and kind of, uh, kind of what you folks do. Yeah, so we started as coaches for one of the middle school programs that we'll talk about uh, today called First Lego League Challenge. And um, basically we started as coaches, found the programs very uh, impactful to our own children. Um, we had a son and a daughter, both in STEM related fields today. Hmm. And not always, like the journey is not such, always so straight, but today where they're ending up would be absolutely in STEM. And so um, along the way we, you know, started this program in the city where we were living at the time, Fremont in 2002 mm -hmm. a couple of years we were starting to support a lot of growth in the city and so we found it playing at learning at that time to basically help the coaches the community that we sort of founded to um, basically participate in the program a little bit um, easier right so how do we do workshops how do we run events locally we were then invited to take over in 2004 for Northern California. And without maybe thinking through the growth and impact that that might have, we said, sure, let's, let's take it on um, with a group of really wonderful volunteers. Uh, we've quadrupled the number of, of teams that we're supporting uh, and added several other first programs along the way. So super, <laughs> super wow. amazing yeah. kind of uh, kind of growth then and impact, right? The hearing from the kids is what what really um, both my own and others has really sustained me since 2004. So is this uh, organizationally, uh, you have staff, I noticed that you also are soliciting volunteers on your website, but uh, uh, how does that, uh, how is that organized, you know, physically? Yeah, that's a great question. So up until recently, we were 100% volunteer driven. Oh my. And, um, so everything we did was um, based on volunteers, including myself, my spouse, many many friends and family also volunteer uh, through the years. And we got to a, a tipping point where we no longer could effectively manage the thousand plus teams that we were supporting with mm -hmm. only volunteers. And so we've added some part-time staffers. Uh, we are actually hiring a couple more. Um, basically, as the programs have grown and continue to grow roughly 10 to 15% a year on year, 
um, you know, we basically needed to add more dedicated people who could, you know, really help the programs kind of with that consistency and just overall managing. So they're program managers that, you know, basically run each of the three programs that we run. And I wanted to also mention, uh, while I saw that you were soliciting volunteers on your website, you're also soliciting donations. So folks uh, can really look at that uh, website, and I'm sure we'll have that running uh, during the program. And if they have a few dollars to spend, if you, to contribute to this really this wonderful idea, it, it's, it, it's such a national concern is you know having our youth be interested in technology and mathematics and you know science and those kinds of things because as you know you know internationally our standing is not very good in terms of where we are when you compare us to other you know first world countries like china and places like that we need to do much more with that so uh tell me more about the now i noticed on the website you have the first uh there's first First Lego League competition and there's a first technology competition. What, what's the difference between those? Yeah, so there's um, so first Lego League is a program where first the uh, nonprofit that founded it uh -huh. partnered with the Lego company. It's a Lego robotics based program. Uh, so there are several divisions. There's a division called Discover for our kindergartners through second graders. There's a division called explore which is uh, where they are building very simple moving machines mm -hmm. um, and then going to a festival to celebrate and really um, get the kids excited about continuing in that stem journey learn a little bit about teamwork and then in challenge that's where they go into a fully autonomous lego robot uh, on a playing field that's roughly a, a piece of plywood with walls uh, with Lego, it's like an obstacle course, and the kids uh -huh. uh, build as a team. They create, um, you know, a robot that actually, you know, goes through and solves as many of those Lego missions as they can. But one of the hallmarks is not just like playing a video game. Each year, there's a theme, a challenge theme, and the challenge theme is usually based on a problem that we're having in the world. So this past year, it was around energy. Um, this coming year, it's around how we incorporate art um, and the STEAM uh, movement. How do you create art and how does Hollywood, how does all of that come together with our science and engineering uh, kind of uh, background, right? So each year is a different theme. And so the whole obstacle course, each of those missions is actually founded in problems or areas of, of research for scientists and engineers to actually improve and solve. Um, and then as they, so that goes up through their, our middle school. And then in high school, junior high and high school, it uh, extends into a program called First Tech Challenge. Right. And, and that's where they're building uh, not Lego, you know, brick, plastic brick uh, robots, but actually most of the teams uh, build fairly high powered metal or 3D printed type of electronics. And now they're playing instead of themselves on the playing field, they're playing in a game uh, where there's both offense, defense, and basically a two, two team versus two team type of competition. 2v2 type competition. So you have both offense, defense playing, again, related to the theme, uh, and the kids are building amazing robots. Um, uh, they partnered with Google, they have Android Studio, they have, they're learning Java, they're learning Python, all kinds of really great technology skills. But probably for me personally, one of the big advantages that I see from FIRST mm -hmm. are the core values of the program. So they're really emphasizing not just winning, but a notion of gracious professionalism ah. where, uh, you know, you can win, you can be highly competitive, but you should be gracious about it, right? So none of that in your face. Uh, kind of machoism maybe that kind of comes out sometimes in sports and other places if you've ever been to a little league game you kind of have heard probably some of that uh, or any of other youth sports and then the other piece of it for me is that professionalism right so 
uh, although we're not creating seventh grade engineers, we are helping them understand what it means to work in the field of engineering and science and technology, no matter what they end up with, right? So uh, no matter where we go, having a logic and, and being, you know, wonderful professional about it is, will serve our youth very, very well. Right. There's no downside on the soft, so-called soft skills right. uh, that we're teaching the kids. And it's so important, I think, uh, when you have the, the younger uh, children uh, doing the Lego League and stuff like that, that's really part of uh, you know, brain formation, early childhood cognition. It's so important to develop that. And then as they get older and start to socialize, you're talking about the social skills that people need to develop while well, being competitive, but still be gracious, you know, being professional, but still being you know, assertive enough in what you want to do, what you believe, to really put something out there that's going to make, uh, make you shine in a way. Um, so give us an idea of what these competitions are like kind of internally when you have, have the kids there and the adults and everybody's gathered around and this very exciting competition going on. Yeah, I mean, it basically is driven by the notion of you get what you celebrate. So the intent of all of our events that we run are really to help celebrate no matter what what level of achievement the kids have done right. let's celebrate that yes uh there are competitions there are winners there are trophies right uh in the high school program there's advancement eventually to the world championship um, right. which is super amazing and, and fun if you've uh not seen those videos uh it's amazing amazing robots from around the world but um, more than anything, what we want to leave with our kids is that hunger to learn more, to work as a team, to be good citizens of the world, but also understand that they can actually make a difference. And, um, you know, even in that middle school program, we have kids that have worked with major companies. In the past, we've had comp uh, a team Actually, uh, in the year that the theme was around climate, they worked with the United Nations uh, Committee on Climate, uh, partnered with a small company called Sony, and actually uh -huh. their, some of their ideas actually got implemented. And uh, there was a research uh, being done in the uh, Tahoe National Forest mm -hmm. with the University of Nevada, Reno. Uh, so even, you know, seventh and eighth graders can actually do amazing work and motivate professional companies into maybe changing how they're doing things. So when you have uh, the various levels of competition, certainly as you get into the, the larger competitions, the world competition, something like that, you would have uh, some of the industry leaders uh, in engineering and, and science you know, kind of looking in and, and looking at these ideas and perhaps even thinking of recruiting some of these young minds to, you know, <laughs> to help Absolutely, them push forward yeah. the boundaries of science and technology. Yeah, it first has done a great job in partnering with a lot of really leading um, engineering type companies. You know, here in California, we have quite a few. Um, you know, Qualcomm's a major sponsor, Google's a major sponsor, Apple's lots of companies. But also, additionally, many of them offer scholarships. So there are, I think, $8 million of college scholarships available for um, our, our high school graduates to go on, many of them not necessarily tied to majoring in a STEM field, but they find such value in the experience that they get from FIRST. And there's been a longitudinal study that FIRST has been conducting, I think for eight years now, nine years now, where they've actually shown the impact uh, of FIRST to students, even in, you know, uh, looking at same social economic, same gender, same other activities, first by and large has had an outsized impact to our young women and to our uh, people of color. And so uh, just amazing efforts done by the corporations. Additionally, there are internship opportunities. I know of several where companies are trying to bring in those high schoolers um, into intern programs. Apple has a, a really great program for that, 
where each year they bring in a class of high school interns to basically uh, do creative work at Apple. So super fun kind of opportunities for our young people. That's wonderful. And I did notice also on your website that there are there are sponsorships at different levels. And uh, those are things that people, uh, if they can't do that individually, certainly they can suggest to their companies or people in their industry that perhaps they might want to get involved at, at some level. Yeah, we love even here locally, our local partners. So locally, we have TE T Connectivity, we have Qualcomm money, um, and, and not just money, but we also have uh, their employees volunteer, and many of those uh, companies have what they call dollars for doer programs, mm -hmm. where every time they volunteer for a nonprofit, money comes back to the nonprofit in exchange. So you get a kind of a win win. You get the volunteer hours, but you also get dollars to actually help you grow and continue the mission of what you're trying to achieve. And so definitely we're always looking for people who really like to act local. Um, first as an organization worldwide is doing amazing work. And many of the companies I've already mentioned also support the global effort, but I am here serving local kids. And so it would be great to have our local companies actually support that, whether it's through volunteering, giving a few dollars, or even space. We love our corporate host when they run events. If you have a cafeteria oh or like an event center, um, maybe not even event center, but you know, some place where you can have a large gathering. It could be as small as you know a couple hundred people, or much larger. Some of our companies in the area have fairly large spaces where we could host um, and bring the kids on site. And then you have your employees come down and uh, can actually witness firsthand. So that is what we love. Our kids love coming to corporate sites. We've really struggled since post pandemic to get back into I corporate. Yeah, it's tough, right? Um, but we're getting we're getting rebuilding, uh, and you know definitely love the corporate host who are able to to give us events at their site. That that works great. Mm -hmm. And certainly you have a wonderful online and public presence. Uh, how do people find out about what you're doing and, and you know, step through the door and get involved? <laughs> yeah, that's that's probably uh, marketing is probably our weakest uh, point because we've grown so fast with just word of mouth. Um, and basically, as I mentioned, right, we're growing 10 to 15 percent. Ignoring the the COVID years, which we've almost completely rebounded or or actually exceeded now, um, but without any marketing at all, we've been able to grow the programs pretty dramatically. And in some ways, it's actually been hard because every time we do marketing, we get a lot more teams. But what we really need are a lot more of that infrastructure and volunteers and events, because for every roughly 10 to 12 teams, we need another event for them to go and actually celebrate and recognize the achievements of what they've done. So I, <laughs> it has to be a balancing act, right? We can't just uh, get a lot more teams because then we, we don't have a place for them to actually show off what they've been able to accomplish. And that would be sad. <laughs> so I'm uh, wondering, what is your relationship kind of with the traditional public school uh, organization, the public school system? Certainly they're trying to teach children, uh, you know, and young adults uh, some skills and some not, you know, impart some knowledge and do some things with the classes they have. But, but uh, I'm certain they re realize that they can't do it all. Yeah, absolutely. One of the hardest things uh, for school districts is really getting that uh, there's already the jam packed in the school day. So there's not a whole lot of, you know, bandwidth and time for school teachers to do in classroom training. Now there are certainly programs uh, first offers uh, something called a class pack where a teacher or school district, and there have been several in our area that have successfully been able to find it. But by and large, almost all of our programs are after school or community-based. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, where we find in the schools are more of the private schools where they think this is a huge differentiator for their programs. So we have 
quite a few of the private schools that have you know dedicated teachers to STEM. They love this program. They've picked it up and they continue to operate and, and uh, run programs. They also like to host um, as a way to you know basically uh, further their own uh, marketing, right? By bringing in people onto their campus. Uh, but for the public schools, which is near and dear to my heart, um, we sent our children to, to public schools, mm -hmm. is it's just hard. It's hard for yeah. teachers to, to do this in the classroom during the school day. So what we find more successful is working with things like boys and girls clubs, after oh. other, other after school clubs, um, where there's already you know an installed base of children and then helping volunteers come and mentor and provide that STEM kind of background um, where there's the staff of those after school programs may not really have that background. So it's a kind of a win-win where they already have the kids. Um, we're helping them, you know, maybe get more of that STEM uh, focus into their after school program. So now your volunteers, uh, when they come in, do they have some background or expertise in uh, science, technology, engineering, uh, math, uh, uh, that kind of STEM, you know, concept? Some do. Yeah. So it depends on the kind of volunteering, right? So for event volunteers, we need a wide variety of mm -hmm. uh, skill sets, including people who love teamwork and how do you, how do you evaluate the teamwork aspects? Because that's one of the ways we evaluate teams is not just what did they accomplish, but what was that journey like, right? And so people who are uh, from the HR, program management, yeah. um, other, uh, you know, I'll say non-STEM focused careers right. do really, really well in, in that event driven. For team volunteering, where it's more of a, instead of a one event and done, it's more of an ongoing relationship with a, a set of students. They need, particularly in the high school programs, marketing help, they need financial, uh, mm -hmm. like how do you create a business plan? Right. How do you do fundraising, right? So marketing skills along with those STEM skills. So there's usually a place for any adult who wants to give back. There's usually a place that we can um, make them successful in their volunteering, mm -hmm. no matter what kind of background they have. And you're also on the website, uh, in addition to monetary donations, you're accepting uh, in-kind donations. What, what, would, what would that look like? Yeah, so most of our in-kind is the space. As oh. I said, uh, our, our kids love coming to corporate host or non-school-based event places, right? So we've been in art museums, we've been in uh, different kinds of theaters, uh, we've been in many corporate uh, hosts. The kids just love that because they go to school every day. They kind of know what a school looks like. Uh, but some of these other locations, they've never had an opportunity to really be in that space. Uh, theater, museum, they might be there as a visitor. But it's a different experience when you're actually there uh, kind of as a participant in yeah. one of our events, right? So it's a slightly different different way of, of interacting with that, uh, whether again, as a corporate space, like a cafeteria, um, a big conference room, lots of different, uh, different space. Some of the other in kind that we get, um, we're always looking for marketing help. Uh, we're always looking for video help. Uh, we're looking for just, you know, general help uh, and helping uh, our physical building. So we have a a building we call the play space in San the Jose. Place. Yeah, and that's where we have a, a resident um, high school team that meets there. We have some um, game fields for people. We have storage, but one of the things we're looking to do, we're, we're running, um, supporting the hackathon that's gonna be there next month. Oh, really? So there are ways that volunteers can help us manage our building um, by being a docent, maybe um, helping other people be able to leverage the space that we have uh, in order to continue down our mission of getting kids excited about math and science. So um, yeah, lots of opportunities for yeah. sure.
Well, that's wonderful that there is, is a range of volunteer opportunities because uh, some folks uh, are not uh, better at just kind of docent uh, work than they would be at something that requires a little more expertise in one of the related fields. So, you know, they can be involved. Uh, and, and, you know, children and young adults are a boundless energy. But their attention spans sometimes are not exactly fixed. How much time uh, uh, does this really being immersed in this require for for a, a, a child or young adult to come in and, and really get involved? Yeah. So for the youngest program, so the program that we manage, which is First Legally Explore, um, most teams meet roughly two three hours a week uh -huh. for roughly six to eight weeks, and then they'll go to a festival to go celebrate and basically show off what they've accomplished uh, and get that recognition. And that's usually a four to five hour festival. We try to keep those pretty low key because we're talking kindergarten to fourth graders. So yes, attention span. Usually we have fun team activities for them to do, learn from each other, um, lots of fun. And I love that age range for kids because they they're the ones that can't, you know, they, they express themselves so amazingly with their body language and how excited they are. Yeah. Um, so that's just super fun. As you get into First Lego League Challenge, most teams meet roughly four to six hours a week, depending on the goals they've set for themselves. You know, are they an after school program? We've had teams that, you know, basically meet for 45 minutes a week. And we've had teams that have been, let's say, homeschoolers where they've integrated the lessons into their normal uh, homeschooling uh, curriculum. And so everything from every day we meet for a couple hours to uh -huh. 45 minutes. But on average, it's roughly four to six hours a week, again, over eight to 10 weeks. And they will go to an all day, uh, roughly eight, nine hour type of competition where they will run their robots, they will share their Wonderful. innovations, uh, and uh, they'll set up a display in their in their what we call our team pit area, um, and so that's that's the kind of commitment that's for that. Wonderful. And well, then the high school one is similar, yeah, yeah. just a little bit more impact. Uh, usually they meet year round. Well, that gives people a good idea about kind of what uh, what commitment is required. Jill, we're at Jill, we're our last minute. Jill Wilker, a co-founder of Playing at Learning. Thank you so much for being here with us and, and giving us uh, a little insight into you know the great work you're doing in helping uh, helping our, our our young people and and the children you know kind of take their place in the world of science, technology, engineering, and math. It's so important. It's such great work, and uh, obviously you have a love for it. You know, and uh, that shows yeah. through. Jill Wilker, thanks so much again for being here. And again, people go to the website, volunteer, uh, donate, uh, do what you can to help this great work. Jill, thanks so much again. I've yeah. been Steve Plage. This has been another uh, edition of Nonprofit Spotlight. Join us next time for another edition, and we'll see you then. Mm -hmm.